Hi, Booktube and welcome to a new video and this is a, a discussion video in some senses uh, in that a commenter on my uh, last video which is a weekly wrap up said where do I find my books from where do I know what I want to read because uh, he hadn't heard of, um, of any of the titles and they all sounded interesting to him. Uh, he's called Revenge of the Stoned Rats which uh, I think is a great name. Uh, I also think it uh, sort of read between the lines it's the title of a book that he's written so uh, we shall see because one of the factors is if a title grabs me but we'll, we'll come to that. So you know trying to think about well how do I hear about books that I want to read uh, you know I'm not on any mailing list from publishers I don't get sent very many books as a booktuber um, and it's it's in some ways it's a hard question to answer because there's many different sources by which I access books. Um, I you know I think part of it is I know how to sort of spot a reference so for example if you're reading other people's comments about books you know you go on Goodreads or whatever you read what other people say about books you've just read and if you know they might mention a name of another author uh, and you know I've, I've been doing this long enough and I think it also comes out of my training from my degree you know how to spot references um, that I will go and pursue my own line of inquiry and say, okay, uh, you know, does this author sound of interest to me? And sort of allied with that is don't over, if you're on Goodreads, don't overlook the Goodreads function of, you know, recommendations that they make based on books that you've read. I mean, Google does the same as well, but I don't find that a very useful function because uh, often it's um, influenced by books that you've, uh, you've been browsing online. Um, and if you've decided to reject, not go for that book that you've browsed, but then it, Google will recommend you loads of other books. Um, so I don't think that function is very good, but the Goodreads one is actually very good, I find. So it's sort of, in that sense, it's accidental where you're, you know, you're reading about a book you've just read and, you know, something else pops up. So that's the first one. The second one is BookTube itself. You know, I've only been on here for about 18 months, but it's exponentially increased my exposure to titles of works that I, you know, I wouldn't have come across. I mean, uh, for example, just very simply, I didn't even, it didn't even know there was a Man Booker International Prize until watching uh, various BookTubers uh, overview uh, videos of it when the long list was announced last year. And from that, I got three three or four titles that I went on to read um, but then you'd be just you know this year obviously I was aware to look out for it myself and you know whatever books um, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, cull from that list and there are many other prizes you know the women's prize was not one I'd ever followed but watching booktubers videos um, again I've, you know I've ordered the, the Valeria Luiselli who's an author I've actually read but she writes non-fiction as well as fiction and so I'm finding it a bit hard to sort of re you know keep up with her fiction um, but obviously her, her latest book is is on the women's prize for fiction um, so one is my own sort of reading around referencing two is Goodreads uh, algorithm I suppose three is other booktubers uh, I don't browse uh, bookshops very often because um, I don't really live near any although I, this week we've moved office and uh, the tube station where my uh, office is nearest to has a fantastic bookshop called Camden Locks bookshop uh, inside the station so I'm really pleased about that because I will be able to browse you know on my way home and that actually happened this this week you know we moved on Wednesday and on Thursday, I knew that I was, I was going to finish the book I was reading halfway through my journey home. And I, you know, so I needed another book. So I went into Camden Lock Books and picked one up. And that the only bad thing is that sort of jumped my TBR pile because it was the only one I had to hand on the, on the tube ride home. But anyway, um, so I don't browse very often, but uh, I had the uh, fortunate happenstance of two booktubers uh, Celia and uh, Elizabeth at Bookish North uh, came over to London on a, a trip uh, partially informed by their book buying uh, and we met up and we spent uh, a good chunk of a day uh, browsing secondhand bookshops now of course the beauty of secondhand bookshops is uh, you don't know what you're going to find so I think I picked up about 10 books uh, on our various uh, trips around bookshops uh, of which Five 
were by authors I'd read before, because of course the, the, the bigger source of books, presumably, is authors you'd read before who you like. So Clarice Lispector, A Breath of Life, which is her last book, because I'm determined to read everything by her. Uh, Cilia and I, Buddy, read uh, The Passion of Coins of GH earlier this year, both blown away by it. It could well be my read of the year. So ever since then, I've pledged I'm going to read everything by Lispector. The Monk of Mocha by Dave Eggers. Well, you know, I've read quite a lot of Dave Eggers. I like to read one book of his a year. He seems to knock them out very quickly. Um, and this is his latest book. And I thought it was only out in hardback, as far as I could tell. Uh, but no, uh, Foyle's Bookshop had it. Christopher Priest, The Glamour. I've read a couple of Christopher Priest books, and I, I like them. They're sort of science fiction, mind-bending stuff. He he wrote the book that, that the film, The Prestige, was, was uh, based on. Um, so I will slowly, not with the same urgency of Le Spectre, but I'm happy to read all of Priest's work, but as I say, not quite as urgently as I am with Le Spectre. Uh, Deborah Ugrasic in The Jaws of Life, which is a book of short stories. Now, this is a, this is a shortcoming of Amazon, I find, because Ugrasic I've known, you know, through reading her as one of my favourite authors, but she does also write a lot of non-fiction, which I don't read. Um, so... You know, I didn't know this existed. It doesn't seem to be listed on Amazon, or at least when I was looking out for Aggressive, because she hasn't written a new a book of new fiction for a while, and this isn't new, this is old. But I'd never seen this on Amazon, and there it was in the second-hand bookshop. And finally, Tibor Fisher. Uh, so I read Tibor Fisher's latest release, which came out January this year, hated it, and I was in desperate need to restore my good faith, or his good faith, uh, by reading one of his older books. And this may even have been his... Um, his debut. So all five of these writers I'd read before and I'd liked before. So that was easy. But then we come to uh, others. So this is Andrew Sean Greer, Less, where it's one of those books where, because it won a prize, what did it win? The Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. There's obviously a lot of buzz uh, around, um, you know, that you can't avoid, you know, if you're a reader, you can't avoid encountering. Um, and then, you know, seeing a couple of booktubers talk about it, you know, that it's a very entertaining book. So, you know, why not? I did wait for the hype to die down there. But, you know, there are books that are zeitgeisty. Normally I avoid them like The Plague or like this one. I give it a year to die down and then I feel I can make my judgment uninfluenced by the prevailing opinion. Right, so we've got this Flesh Guitar by Jeff Nicholson. Now, this was a complete punt you know I, I knew never heard of the book I thought I'd never heard of the author but actually I've read one of his books <laughs> called uh, A to Z I think something or London A to Z something like that um, but it was the title and it was the blurb you know I'm big into music so the idea of a human guitar that's going to kind of intrigue me it may be a complete bust it may be you know horrible to read but that was a complete pump buy. So the fact that I don't browse, or up till now I haven't browsed bookshops very often, means these types of books, these pump books, are, are very, very infrequent. Uh, Death and the Penguin. I like the title. Hence, uh, Revenge of the Stone Rats. You know, that might, might, might lead me to buy your book. Um, I was intrigued by the title, read the blurb, that sounded good. Talked to Elizabeth, who, who said she hadn't read this author. But a good friend of hers is a big fan. So, and I have read it, and it is very good. Uh, Such small hands, Andreas Barber. Well, this is a booktuber book. Um, you know, it hasn't won any prize. Well, no, uh, has it won? No, it hasn't won prizes yet. Um, but you know, quite a few booktubers are talking about it, uh, and it sounded intriguing to me. So I don't put it down to the hype train, but you know, I was exposed to this book and the ideas in it that might appeal to me through watching booktube videos. And finally, this wasn't on my book buying trip with Celia and, and Elizabeth. This was um, prior to that. Moving Kings by Joshua Cohen. I've read one book by Joshua Cohen called Numbers. Uh, but this is on the Fitzcarraldo edition. Uh, these sort of blue, plain blue covers are uh, emblematic of Fitzcarraldo. And I read almost all their fiction because they are always, or nearly always, fantastic. There are a couple of titles that I have no interest in, uh, including Olga Tokarashuk's uh, uh, International, uh, was it Women's Prize winning or Man Booker International, whichever one, uh, called Flights. So I had no interest in that, so I haven't read that. And there's another one about agricultural, rural agricultural life in 
Russia or somewhere. I'm afraid of no interest to me. So I don't religiously read them, but chances are if it's got this blue cover edition of Fitzcarraldo, I will read it. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's any other ways that I come by books. Um, the hardest thing, of course, is, you know, is debut books. Um, you know, how do you, find about, how do you find out about those and how do you know you're going to like them? Well, I guess I trust to other people being in the know. So, for example, a booktuber like uh, Eric Carl Anderson does quite big book courts, which I'm very grateful because there's always going to be one or two interesting sounding titles there. Now, Eric is very well plugged into the publishing world and, you know, he does get sent books. Uh, he does uh, seem to have a, a, an awareness ahead of time of what books are coming out. So, you know, that's a resource that, you know, is free and, you know, everyone is free to use and should use because Eric is a fantastic resource for, for new releases. Um, so that's pretty much it, really. It's not a science to it because, you know, taste in books tends to be um, sort of uh, intuitive or, or, you know, um, there's no, you know, it's not scientific method. I ought to say uh, there are two things I will never uh, buy books or track down books on the basis of. One is the cover, because I'm completely uninterested in, in cover design. Uh, so a book cannot sway me by its cover, though it can sway me by its title. And in fact, I'll post a video where I talk about both of those things uh, in greater detail. Um, and the other thing is, I'm uninterested in books uh, written in series. Um, so that eliminates quite a lot of books for me. Uh, obviously, there are certain genres that I do not read in. Uh, fantasy, romance, uh, supernatural, horror... Uh, don't read much detective fiction these days, if any. Um, so, you know, again, that cuts out a great swathe of books. Um, so there you have it. Uh, it is a bit idiosyncratic, but I think it is for everyone, really. You know, someone who buys books because they're in series or in covers is, is no less legitimate a logic than my, you know, if you liked um, Sergio de la Pava, you'll like, I don't know, um, some other author um so yeah so in the in in the comments please let me know kind of how you select books or find out about books that you think you might be interested in i'm sure you know in this day and age that book watching other people's booktube videos plays a huge influence in in the books that we choose to buy and read okay so say let me know in the comments how you know how you select books and uh till next time